and welcome to today's webcast from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality on the SOPS Data Entry and Analysis Tools. My name is Laura Gray, and I'm the Project Manager for the ARC Surveys on Patient Safety Culture Program. I'll be serving as your moderator today. Um, before we begin, I have a few of the standard housekeeping slides and details to go over with you. If you're having any difficulty hearing the audio from your computer speakers, you can change your audio selection so that WebEx can call you back and you can connect through your phone instead. In the event that your computer freezes during the presentations, you can try logging out and logging back into the WebEx to refresh the page. Um, also, you might just be experiencing a lag in the advancement of slides due to internet connection speed. If you need help at any time during today's event, you can use the Q&A icon to ask for help. So um, today's presentation is going to include a tutorial of the Hospital SOPS Data Entry and Analysis tool. And if you need to zoom in on your WebEx display, you'll see a magnifying glass with a plus sign on the left-hand side of your screen. And then to zoom out, you would go ahead and click the magnifying glass with a minus sign. Um, at any point through today's presentation, if you have any technical difficulties or you have a question you'd like to ask us, you can do so through the Q&A feature. And depending on the browser that you're using, your WebEx screen may look slightly different than this slide, but just look for that Q&A icon on the bottom right-hand side, and be sure to select the drop-down option that says All Panelists, and that way you can direct your question um, so our team can see it and help you out. Feel free to share your name and or your organization and role when you type in your question as well. Uh, today's session is being recorded, and a replay of this webcast in the slides will be made available on the ARC website. Um, so now that we have some of those housekeeping details out of the way, I am happy to introduce our speaker for today. So I'm really pleased to welcome my colleague, Teresa Famalero. Teresa is the SOPS database manager. She has more than 20 years of experience in health services research, including data collection, reporting, and dissemination to target audiences. And she has managed the suite of safety culture survey databases since 2006. Uh, Ms. Famalero also contributes to the development of the survey tools and supporting materials. And as mentioned earlier, my name is Laura Gray, and I will be your moderator today. Um, so here's our agenda and what we hope to cover. Uh, we'll start out by providing an overview of the SOPS data entry and analysis tools, and then we'll describe the tool survey settings, explain the specifications and system requirements, and then uh, the best part is you'll get to see a live demonstration of the newest tool from the SOPS Hospital 2.0 survey. Uh, then we'll jump into some answers to common questions about the tool and how to obtain those. Um, and lastly, we look forward to answering some of your questions that you'll uh, be typing into us. So without further ado, let me pass the baton to Teresa. Thank you so much, Laura. Um, again, my name is Teresa Famalero, and I'm going to speak to you about um, the SOPS data entry and analysis tools. The SOPS data entry and analysis tools are generally used by healthcare organizations that administer one of the SOPS surveys in-house, meaning they do not use a vendor and instead use in-house staff to administer the survey in their facility. The tools are meant to display results from a single facility. The tools allow you to input respondent survey data, create graphs and tables to display your survey results overall, and by various demographics, such as staff position and unit work area. You can also compare your results against the most recent database results, export your survey data for submission to the appropriate SOPS database, and print your survey results into a single report. We have tools for each of the SOPS surveys, the SOPS Hospital Surveys 1.0 and 2.0, as well as the Nursing Home, Medical Office, Community Pharmacy, and Ambulatory Surgery Center Surveys. One of the features of the tool is to show you the latest database results in comparison to the results of your own survey data. And we update the tools after data results, database results are released, so they're up to date. 
So currently, the SOPS Hospital 2.0 tool allows users to compare the results with the 2019 pilot test results. However, this tool will be updated approximately in the spring of 2021 to give time for analysis of the database results and posting of the SOPS Hospital 2.0 database report on the ARC website. You may know that in addition to the core surveys, ARC also offers optional supplemental item sets that can be administered at the end of the core safety culture survey. So we also have data entry and analysis tools for each of these supplemental items. The health information technology patient safety supplemental items for the hospital survey, the value and efficiency supplemental items for the hospital survey, and the value and efficiency items for the medical office survey. And we're also currently in the development process of other supplemental items, and we will create tools for these new item sets as well. So here's a bit of system requirements before we get into the actual um, demo of the tool. Um, the tools do use Excel macros. So when we send you the tool by email, make sure your email uh, firewall accepts macros um, as well um, before requesting the tool. And then you will also need to enable macros before using the tool. And the instructions are shown here on this slide. Um, when opening the tool, you may need to click on the enable content button at the top of the tool. And this is what enables the macros to run on the tool. I would also recommend that when you save your results, you, you continue to save it as a .xlsm file, um, because that is what maintains the macros. Do not save it as a .xlsx file or regular Excel file. So how do you use the tool? Well, it's pretty easy. First, you're gonna enter your survey data. You're gonna click on a button for updating tables and graphs and then you're gonna review and share your results. So today I'm gonna to demonstrate for you the SOPS Hospital 2.0 data entry and analysis tool. And when you open up this tool, you will see this main menu. Other tools that we have will have similar menus, though the categories may be slightly different. Now I'm going to share my screen and walk through the tool. Um, this may require a little bit of patience, so um, if it gets a little clunky, uh, just excuse me, we are doing a live demo. So I'm gonna share my screen first. Okay. And then I'm gonna click on the Excel tool. Um, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Yeah, Teresa, it looks great. Thank you so much, Laura. So again, here is the main menu of the SOPS Hospital 2.0 Data Entry and Analysis Tool. The main menu is divided into seven basic sections. Let's start with section one, entering data. First, I will click on the instructions button. The instructions provide information for entering and tracking your results in the tool. And then for all pages in the tool, Use the main menu to return main menu button to return back to the main menu. Next, I'm going to go to the explanation of calculations button. And the explanation of calculations page describes how the tool computes the results. And then I'm going to the interpreting your results page. And this page provides visual explanations of positively and negatively word items as well as composite measure results, as you can see here. So I'm gonna go right back up to the main menu. Now let's get started with how to input your hospital information and your survey data by going to the data entry page. So I'm gonna click on the data entry button. So this is the data entry page. The only place that you should enter data is for those cells that are highlighted in green. First, let's start by entering the month and year that you completed data collection. 
So here I had already previously entered November 20, November 2020. And then you should enter the number of surveys that you distributed. So if that were to be paper, you would know how many surveys you distributed. And if it was web, you would know how many emails that you sent the survey out to. Then you also want to enter here your hospital information, your hospital name, actually. I just called mine here Hospital Inc. because it's a sample. But this name of your hospital is going to be populated throughout the, re the results that you're going to see in the tool. So let's go to where you would enter data. If you just did a paper survey, then you could simply start by entering a row of data for each completed survey. So here we say site ID should be the same for that one site because remember the tool only accepts one site. Unique ID should be unique to the survey respondent. And then you would start by entering the specific information for each of the surveys. You may ask yourself, well, what are these numbers? Well, these numbers match uh, the numbers that are in the um, hospital 2.0 survey. So when you look on the survey itself, you'll see, for example, one is equal to strongly disagree, um, all the way to five, which is strongly agree. So here, five mentioned strongly agree. And as you can see, we do have it so that you can only enter um, the specific numbers that are associated with the survey. If you would like to enter your data by web, so for example, you took a web survey, you can do that, but you wanna make sure that your headers match the headers that you have in the web survey. So you might have to adjust that when you export your data from your web survey. And then when you copy and paste it, you only wanna copy and paste it to the cells that are associated with it. So if I was only entering this many surveys, I would only copy and paste here, and I would copy using paste special because you only wanna copy and paste values. You don't wanna copy and paste any formulas, just values. You should never, and I can't repeat this enough, ever copy and paste entire rows. This will damage the macros that are already inside the tool. So uh, I think we've spoken about that. Um, once you have entered all of your survey data, you will see in the orange section the number of surveys that were entered and the response rate. And this automatically is calculated based on what you entered in the green cells. So here we see 48% response, response rate, rate with 311 surveys entered. So once you've done that, we're going to update tables and graphs which may take a few seconds, depending upon how much data we enter. The button will return to normal once it's completed. So let's take a look by updating tables and graphs here. And as you can see, the button went right back to normal and the tables and graphs and the tools have now been updated. Let's go back to the main menu. So once you enter your data, and we're still looking here at section one, you can export your survey data in the format that is ready for submission to the SOP hospital database. So if I were to click here, export data, you could see I could save it. But instead of saving it here, just for the sake of time, I'm going to show you what the export really looks like. So here is the exported data file. And as you can see, it has all the data ready to submit. However, it does not include any of your other specified checks, for example, other specified for staff position or unit work area, or any of your comments. And that's because we don't accept that data into any of our SOC databases. Let's go back to the tool. And here we are back on the main menu. And let's go to section two, your hospital results. Let's click on respondent demographics. So let me make that a little bigger. There you go. So the Respondent Demographics page summarizes your survey administration information, such as when you completed data collection and your number of completed surveys, your number of surveys administered, and your response rate. 
as well as, all, as well as all of your demographic information, such as staff position and unit work area. If respondents added other specified text, you can also see that displayed. For example, if I click on staff position other, the tool will show you the responses for that other specified variable. And here you can see we have other staff positions such as recreational therapist, case manager, et cetera. Let's go back to the main menu. Or we can, yeah, we can either go back to the demographic page or we could go back to the main menu. So let's go down again to your hospital results. Here are the composite measure results. And as you can see, we have 10 composite measure results for hospital 2.0. And this is all based, I, I hope you understand, this is all based on what we would call sample data or fake data. It's not representing um, any specific hospital. It's just to show you what the data looks like. And this is showing you percent positive results for your specific hospital. And then let's go down and let's look at the item level results. This is the item level results for your hospital. And if you notice I mentioned before, how your hospital, your hospital name would be through, would be showing up throughout all of the reports. You see hospital results for Hospital Inc. If you were St. Mary's, it would say hospital results for St. Mary's, et cetera. And then it shows the number of responses um, that uh, completed the survey. So in this example, we're showing you the items for supervisor, manager, or clinical leader, and you can see it shows the percent positive, neutral, and negative as well as the percentage of respondents that, answer, that did not answer the question or answered not ask as a whole, don't know. Let's go back to the main menu. We also, oh, I don't want to do that. We want to go back to patient safety rating. So here are the hospital um, uh, patient safety rating uh, percentages, and it's a straight frequency of how respondents answered. And then here is the straight frequency of how your hospital answered for the number of events reported in the past 12 months. And this item, as you know, is in the past 12 months, how many patient safety events have you reported? So it's asking the respondent to describe that information. Let's go back to the main menu. We also have a section for survey comments, and it just shows the percentage of respondents that did um, answer survey comments. And again, this is based data, and here we only have 1% uh, respondents uh, providing. So now let's take a look at the uh, comparative results. Um, here are the, um, and that would be in section three. So here are the um, individual hospital composite measure results compared to the 2019 pilot test results. We often show the minimum and maximum hospital composite measure results from the pilot test. The darker green are the individual hospital results, and the light green are the results from the pilot test. As you can see here. Let's go back to the main menu. And here are the item uh, percent uh, positive results compared to the pilot test results. And we pretty much show the same um, exact format for the items. And then let's take a look at the patient safety rating. And because the patient safety rating is showing um, more of a frequency, so you're seeing the frequency of um, excellent compared to excellent in the pilot uh, test results, we're showing these colors are a little bit different so that you can see um, it's not just percent positive, but it's actually the entire frequency. And so the dark blue is your hospital and the light blue is pilot hospital. And then it's the same thing for the number of events reported in the past 12 months. Again, uh, the darker one is your hospital and the lighter one is the pilot. So, now we're going to talk about sections four through seven. Sections four through seven show results broken out by respondent characteristics such as staff position, 
unit work area, interaction with patients, and tenure in work area. Let's click on the staff position composite measure results. Here you see the hospital percent positive results for each composite measure, broken out by the staff position and compared to the pilot, the pilot test results. Some of the staff positions have been combined for reporting purposes. And then to be included or to have your results show up, you need to have at least five respondents in a category to report results. If there are less than five respondents for a category, the results will not be calculated and a hyphen will show up in that cell. So as you can see here on for advanced practice nurse under supervisor, manager, or clinical leader support for patient safety, that one does not have, um, that specific category doesn't have at least five respondents, and so we don't calculate those results. And that's really for confidentiality purposes and um, for validation of the data. We also show the same thing for the item level results. So you can see all of these and it's all of the items. As well as for patient safety rating and number of events reported. So here we start with number of events reported and we go down to the patient safety rating. And we show the full frequency here. We also show these same types of results for unit work area, as you can see. Compl uh, same thing for interaction with patients, with and without interaction with patients. And for tenure in your unit. So here you have less than one year to all the way to 11 or more years. Let's go back to the main menu. Next, you can print out this entire report. You can print out all of the results of the report. And I'm gonna show you here, if I click on print all, it's gonna to wanna to start printing. So I'm gonna show you a sample report. Oh, wait a minute. I have to show you something else, more exciting. First of all, you have to edit your report cover sheet. So here, you need to enter anything that's in red. So here, my name of my hospital, which I already put in the data entry sheet, that's Hospital Inc. So you put, should put in here um, city and state, whichever it is, maybe it's, I don't know, uh, Rockville, Maryland, month and year, uh, you can put in December 2, 2020, and then your contact information if somebody wants to contact you about the report. Go back to the main menu. And here's the sample report. So here, as you can see, I did not enter that the stuff, uh, the information that was in red, but I have all of your respondent demographics, uh, as well as other staff positions, there were no other work areas. And then you get to your composite measure results, as well as um, your item results, as well as any anything like that. And then you can see here, um, your comparative results, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a nice little report. Okay, let's get back. I think I'm gonna stop sharing and get back to the, um, the presentation. And I'm gonna to go to the next slide. So here's some common questions you may have about the Excel tool. And um, I just wanted to go over those. So the first one is, can I modify the Excel tool? Well, we don't really recommend that you modify the Excel tool because changes to the tool may cause the tool to malfunction or not work properly. Uh, the tool is a complicated Excel tool that contains many macros, worksheets, and report templates. And the tool has been thoroughly tested and checked for quality control and accuracy. And so we just really don't recommend um, you, uh, you modifying it for those reasons. Um, the next question is, how can I export my web survey data into the Excel tool? Well, first of all, we can't tell you how you can export your data from your web survey because each platform is different. So I can't explain how to export your survey data. However, you can program your web survey so that it matches the variables and response options that are present in the Excel tool. The Excel tool includes all of the variables in the survey, including the open text fields for the other specified sections for work area, staff position, and the comments section. And if you want to copy and paste your web survey into the Excel tool, please only and copy and paste data into the cells that are meant to be. Do not copy and paste entire rows as that will 
affect some of the macros in the tool. Another common question is, will I be able to use the Excel tools in Microsoft Excel for Mac? Well, unfortunately, you will not be able to use this tool on your Mac due to compatibility issues. We would advise you trying to run this tool in Microsoft Excel for Windows instead, and everything that you would benefit from using the tool is embedded in the ActiveX controls, which do not work on Mac computers. And then another question we sometimes get is, the tool is not working, can you help? Well, sometimes we do get these questions for us, from others uh, for help, and yes, we are always available to, available to help via our free technical assistance. Users sometimes forget to enable the macros or fail to enter the site ID and unique ID for each respondent in the data entry tab. So we're happy to review your tool as needed. Uh, another question you may have is, great, so how can I obtain the tool? Well, you can obtain all of the SOPS data entry and analysis tools by contacting our help desk at databases on safety culture at westat.com. And please be sure to specify in the subject line SOPS Excel tool, as well as the Excel tool you're interested in. So if it is for the SOPS hospital survey, please specify the survey version, like the hospital Excel tool 1.0 or hospital Excel tool 2.0. So that's it for me. I will pass it back to Laura to hear the questions we have now from the audience. Great, thank you so much, Teresa. Um, I think the tutorial was super helpful to, to watch it live, so greatly appreciate that. Um, so as Teresa mentioned, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to answer a couple of your questions um, quickly. Uh, as a reminder, you can type those into the Q&A box and um, just look for that icon and address it to all panelists so that we can see that. Um, so we did get some questions come in um, during Teresa's tutorial, so let me go ahead and um, start off with some of those. So um, the first question, and Teresa, I think I'm going to ask you to go ahead and go back to sharing the Excel tool, if that's okay. Oh, sure. um, no problem. It's to show, if you can please show again, um, perhaps a little bit more slowly, how you would properly paste data into the tool in only the green rows and columns, not pasting an entire row because it would damage the macros. So do you think you can spend just a second explaining that or showing the, the proper way to do that? I absolutely can. I just need someone to let me share my screen. So I can, I guess I need to have the ball pop and I'll share my screen. Oh, great. I'm gonna share my screen. Here we go. So let's go back to the main, oh, here we go. Okay. So I'm going to show you. So like, for example, I'm just going to say it's going to be these five cells. If this is how your data came out in your Excel tool, I mean, in your, let's say, in your web survey, you have to make sure that it matches exactly to these headers. Um, what you would do is you would just copy, let's say here I have these cells. Let's imagine, let me put this into another worksheet just so we can just double check them a little bit I'm going to just put this in another worksheet, and I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel. So we're going to copy this. We are going to go to Excel, just a plain Excel file. I can get it. Okay. So like, let's say this is how your data came out in your Excel, in your web survey. You would simply copy and paste the exact data like this. So you're not copying and pasting rows, you're only copying and pasting this. And you go back into the Excel tool. And you click on the very beginning and you go paste, do paste special, and see where it says the numbers, which is value. Okay, and there it goes. So that's what we mean by that. Does that make sense? It, it does. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Um, another question we had here is um, our health system has over 20 hospitals. Can I include all of my hospital's data in the tool? So the tool um, uh, is meant for a single hospital. However, if you wanted to see your results overall at the system level, you could do it except that the, I want to make very, very clear that the tool only allows up to 5,000 records. 
So we know that some hospital systems have 60 hospitals, and I'm sure that they're going to go over 5,000 records. So um, we recommend not extending the tool, not trying to put force more records because the tool will freeze. On the other tools, this is only for the hospital, the hospital system. The hospital system, the hospital tools will allow 5,000 records. On the other tools, like the medical office, nursing home, ambulatory surgery, et cetera, those will only allow up to 2,500 records. Okay, okay. thanks, Please. Teresa. Um, if you don't mind, stop sharing. We'll jump back to the slides. Um, we just have a couple to wrap up here. And I'm so sorry that we're out of time and we weren't able to answer more of the questions from today. Um, let me just wrap up with a couple of slides here in closing for you all. Um, we uh, noticed on the registration for today's webcast that many of you are new to the SOP survey. So we really wanted to highlight an upcoming webcast that might be helpful to you. Um, in about two weeks, we'll have a SOP 101 webcast coming up, and that's going to be December 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the SOP surveys, the databases, resources, uh, technical assistance, and updates, uh, we encourage you to register and join us, and you can do that by going to the website www.ahrq.gov slash SOPS and look for the announcement titled uh, Register for the Webcast. On a related note, I um, wanted to share some information about how to stay connected with us. Uh, we periodically send email announcements about SOPS news, um, including new webcasts, data submission timelines, and other products, and you can sign up for these email updates from us by going to the ARC website and clicking in the top right-hand corner and then choosing the email updates uh, with the surveys on patient safety culture. Um, so again, just want to thank you all for joining us. A brief webcast evaluation will pop up when you close out, and uh, we really would appreciate your feedback if you can take a moment to help us, um, and it'll help us improve our offerings and plan future events to meet your needs. We invite you to visit the ARC website and uh, don't hesitate to contact us at any time by email or phone. Uh, thank you again for joining us and this concludes today's presentation.